Hey, this is Dr. B, and let's talk about chemical equilibrium. This is where you have a state of reversibility. Imagine A plus B turning into C plus D. Perhaps it's not surprising that once C and D form, they can reverse, right? C and D can react to form A plus B. If you're a synthetic chemist, this is probably not a desirable thing if you're trying to make C plus D. So some scientists think of this as from the perspective of equilibrium being something you'd like to destroy or at least minimize. We can define it as the state where things are going forward at the same rate that they're going backwards. And I hope you can see from that that in no way is it true that the reaction has stopped. It's simply the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate, and that is the state under those conditions, right, of temperature and pressure and concentration, you hit a certain state of equilibrium. It might be pretty far along. It might be not very far along at all. Now, we already talked about rate. And that's experimentally determined. All you really need to know is the concentrations of your two starting materials, not your products. And then you experimentally determine what the rate is by performing a series of experiments and seeing how sensitive the rate is to the concentration of A and B. You typically get a, a whole number for these values, these exponents. And you get a K value as a result where a small K would suggest a very slow rate, a very high K would suggest a much faster rate. So that's rate, right? But equilibrium is a very different thing. Without going into the reasons why they set it up this way, the powers that be have defined the equilibrium constant as being equal to the concentrations of the products over the reactants where the coefficients do in fact become the exponents. Notice here for rate, they're experimentally determined. It's also true that you need to be part of the equilibrium system in order to do this. So we generally omit solids and liquids. So this is yet another K value, the equilibrium constant. And as usual, I think of it as just kind of a relative indicator. A low number, and let's arbitrarily say less than one, means that the equilibrium is pretty lousy. Things aren't moving forward very much. And greater than one, much, much greater than one, for example, could be very good, if you will. That means the reaction is proceeding to completion is essentially irreversible. Generally omit liquids and solids. Take a look at the system as it's written and ask yourself, is everything part of the equilibrium? If something is popped out as a precipitate, um, then it's no longer in that equilibrium mixture, so we're going to ignore it from this equilibrium constant. So why don't we practice a few? Oh, and by the way, that state K is when you have hit that equilibrium conditions. Things have equilibrated. But what about before you're there? Or what if you've gone too far? We call that value Q, and that's where you might be at a certain time. Say early in a reaction you were nowhere near that equilibrium position. That means Q is less than K, so the reaction's going to go forward. Sometimes the reaction can go beyond its equilibrium value. Oh, for example, something that is super saturated. It has no earthly right really being there. It will go left until the uh, equilibrium constant is obtained. So that's Q versus K. Let's write some equilibrium expressions. I hope you pause these videos and try them on your own first. Take a look at that one and tell me how you'd set it up. Just apply this simple rule here. Okay, what I would do is first I'd observe gas, gas, gas. Everything's in equilibrium. I'm not going to omit anything. Then I'd check for exponents. Ooh, I got one. Make sure that this thing gets squared. And then I'd remember products go on top. So I'd write down products over reactants. And don't forget to make that coefficient an exponent. Not too bad, right? Let's try another. Okay, pause the video. Tell me what you'd do and see if you got it right. Now what I would do is I would observe, oh wait a minute, salad and salad, chop and chop. I'll get rid of those. So it's just CO2 over CO. Any coefficients? Nope. And there you go. Now let's solve one problem that is essentially plug-in and this will complete our introduction to equilibrium. There's your chemical reaction. There's your incredibly lousy equilibrium constant. And here's some values. We want to know the concentration of hydrogen under these conditions. Okay, pause that video. 
Here's how I would do it. Well, I'd write the equilibrium expression. It looks like it's going to be products over reactants. Nothing gets omitted. Make sure you square this one and this one. And then I'd plug in uh, and see what's missing. Would I rearrange? Well, let's see how it looks like when I set it up. So I've got everything written, and I think I have two of these three numbers. And let me move this little image here. Yeah, so I've got everything except this one. So perhaps I would just do the math required to solve for H2. Turn th that into a number. H2 equals this divided by that number, for example, would be one way to do it. And you should find that the hydrogen concentration is somewhere. There it is. Very low. 0.0377 moles per liter. Okay, this is an introduction to chemical equilibrium.